Mm. This is an interesting colour. Oh, hello, everybody. Come closer. Now, those of you that don't know me, my name's John. I've been in and around the art scene for the last 25 years, something like that, Timmouth, that is. What art do you enjoy doing the most? What art do I enjoy yes. doing? I enjoy, Sandra, the two main things. And there are there's six things. Yeah. Draw it properly, paint it nicely. Draw it properly, paint it nicely. Draw it properly, paint it nicely. That's all it That's is. That's all, yeah. That's all it is. You draw it properly, you paint it nicely. I don't mind what subject. I don't mind what medium, although anyone that knows me will tell you that I pretty much specialise in watercolours these days. I just like the way the, the, the water takes the, I like the way the medium works. Yeah. The way the water takes the paint, it's like a conversation. Yeah. With the oils and acrylics, which I do enjoy, or I have enjoyed, I haven't done it for a long time. It's very much you put the paint on and that's the end of the sort of the dialogue as it were i like i like it when it continues to work and the water does all mad things yeah so yeah pretty much that really did you um, abstract or anything i'm like that? very interested yeah. in abstract i'm a bit too stupid to really um grasp i'm sure you're not <laughs> well no i'm in many ways i'm a genius it's <laughs> maestro um no I, i'm very interested in abstract and if i'm honest that's what i would hang in my house yeah. Um, but I, I haven't really had time to really study it properly. So yeah. I'm a way down the line. Yeah. Me, really. I think you really, obviously, you need to really know your trade. Yeah. Inside out before you even think about abstract. Right. Yeah. yeah. And how long have you been doing art? Well, that's a good question. Um, professionally now, I guess probably about forty years. No, not that, not much. Thirty-five years. Yeah, and you, you don't get bored. Like, no. no, that's the sin. No, right, yeah. I could paint the same thing over and over again, <laughs> and it's going to come out different. Better and better, time. yeah. Well, it's different. Oh, different, yeah. Differenter and differenter, and that is the word differenter. Right, all right. And um, what is your favourite inspirational place in Devon? Well, um, I like it in here. You know, I always get in here and I get very chilled, but that's yeah. much more of a micro thing. Um, if I wasn't to mention the back beach over at Timmouth, that would be remiss because I get great inspiration from there, looking up the river, watching the sun yeah, go down, all well, that lot. It's um, and indeed, it is with um, if Sam can pan around to those photographs, uh, uh, those paintings, sorry, up there, prints of yeah. me sitting there. Oh, enjoying your beer. Yeah, a study of a beer in the sunset. It's pretty yeah. much what Timmouth's all about. Um, but I also have to say, I get very moved on Dartmoor. Um, yeah, it's beautiful mm -hmm. there. I always feel safe in Dartmoor. It's one of those places mm. I feel close to the earth. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I love it there. I feel all my fears and self-loathing and you know, mm. anxiety and self-hatred and guilt and self-loathing. Yeah, yeah. When I go there, I feel like free. Disappears. Yeah. yeah. I'm not scared of anything. Oh, great. Yeah. And um, can you describe a real life situation that inspired you? To paint? Yeah. Interesting. I mean, what a very early memory I have. Um, well, no, not very early. I was, I was working, I was living at home. I was probably 18, 19, just left school and stuff. Working in a factory. I used to love dabbling. I always did a bit of bits and bobs, mm. you know, because mum was very arty as was my grandfather, um, so I had that in the house. But you know, I was, mum would go, she'd work nights, it was just me and mum living there. I'd go out in the morning to work, it was dark, I always remember, it was quite early, I'd go to the factory to work. You know, of course, mm. a hard life. <laughs> and I'd go to the factory to work, as I was going up the front path, she'd come back up, and that would be our sort of contact for the day, and vice versa, and then sort of new. I do remember one time, as we were going past each other, she said, John, because that's how she spoke. Oh, yeah. said, John! Like that. And I'm like, yeah, what, what mum? She went, just looked at me and said, don't forget your art, dear. Don't forget your art. <laughs> and that didn't, you know, I thought, oh, yeah, all right, okay. But it's, it nestled, you know? And that was, and I did. And I, I think that was where it all started, really, when I went back to, oh, well, I'll see if I can dabble a little bit and then. 
just took it from there really. So I'd say that was the turning point, yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And this is a, yes, a funny one. So, oh, what, funny one, yeah. Yeah, so what superpower would you have and why? Superpower? Yeah. Have you not seen that painting of sand? Well, then maybe oh. we can have a look at it. I'd think that's a superpower in itself, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> I can paint sand. That is part incredible. Of my sort of sickness. Um, <laughs> Wow. That must be so hard. Well, it took a long time, like, for quite a few years. There's so much detail. It's, 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 it's basically it's a glorified doodle. Yeah. But um, as opposed to other superpowers, what would it be? I, I suppose when I was younger, you want to fly, don't you, and all that. But I'm too scared of heights to do that. <laughs> and the other thing that was that is commonplace is to be invisible, isn't it? Yeah. But that's too much. That's just the voyeurism. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, it's just wrong. So you don't want to be invisible. Invincible, no, because we, who doesn't like a bit of pain? True. <laughs> mm -hmm. And who, you know, we all need to lose from time to time, don't we? Yeah. Otherwise we don't win. So we feel like a little family. Um, I'm, a, I'm a carpet designer by um, uh, by training, and that's uh, what I still do for my living. But I paint as well, and like manage to do sort of half and half at the at the moment. And the one side helps the other, I think. Yeah. You know, so they get together quite sort of um, each inspires and informs the the other. Uh, so it's a nice combination. Yeah, probably. All right, I'll start with a fast question. Uh, did you always wanted to become an artist? Um, I think, Why? yes, I did. I did. Um, I kind of, um, I, I, I think everybody gets a little bit distracted having having a family mm, and, yeah. uh, and and just living your life and, and doing the paying your mortgage thing. I think that <laughs> that all takes away from actually being an artist. And I think uh, you probably have to be really quite selfish and... and and, and focused and single-minded um, at, at some point to, uh, but but it's nice to uh, it, it's really nice to combine things in your life. Um, for instance, I did my so I did my degree course in, in textiles and uh, and the, the title of my degree was actually the design of um, carpets and floor coverings, which is quite specific. Oh, yeah. But to be honest, I I had you know got a job after that and and managed to earn a living and pay my mortgage. Yeah, doing that. Amazing. So, um, so it's all uh, what you have to do in life. But yes, yes, I don't, yes. you know, yeah. I'm, I'm always trying does to. You write, does when you, I grow yeah. up, I want to be an artist, oh, and obviously wow. you can't do both. So that's that's the yeah. joke, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so great. yeah. And what does your art represent? Hmm. Um, it it represents. Um, well, a lot of it is quite representational, so I'm, I'm thinking about the natural world and my surroundings and where I am in it, so, um, so yeah, a lot of it represents uh, beautiful, interesting things that I'm seeing, things that I'm interested in and things that I want to, I sort of want to tell other people about, really. So maybe that's great. Yeah. So could you tell me about the, this painting here? So what inspired you to paint that? Well, that was one of the um, so love living here by the seaside. That was one of the few um, trips we've had, like a, a sort of hot holiday abroad, and it was really hot. And it was the the heat of the being on the you know you love being by the the sea anywhere, even like when it's cold and windy, it's brilliant. But actually, to experience that um, heat and sound and the shimmering the sort of um, heat heat off into the distance, looking around that headland was. Um, was you know quite a it, yeah, it was it was different lovely. i just so, love the colors oh, yeah. it's just so bright it's amazing yeah it was it was like a it was a happy kind of like moment and like wow yeah. <laughs> this is what it's meant to be like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so it sort of came from that trip yeah. how mm -hmm. about the next one here with the face yeah so that one's quite quite different and it's all sort of it's a little bit melancholy but i hope not too uh, depressing it was a it's a still um a still calm day and this is up near um near exeter on that bit of the canal where you you can walk along it, into town there and there's quite a few um that that boat's gradually um 
it's it's from a like a series that I'm doing called Returning to Nature. So um, when you see sort of dinghies and, and boats and it, there's a lot around this area, there. Ooh, yeah. they're just sort of abandoned and they finished. They're not they're not really gonna they're not out on the water anymore and they've uh, they've, they've done that bit of their life and they're gradually returning to nature. The wood starts to deteriorate. The paint peels. You know you get these lovely layers of. Um, so where the boat's been in its life, who's um, who's been using it, looking after it, and uh, it sort of tells a story. And it's quite, um, it's just quite a sort of fascinating yeah, uh, thing. And also that people paint very nice to paint with a knife. You get these lovely textures and lots of colours oh, coming through. Yeah. So, um, so, so that one yeah. is just a sort of right. nice yeah, quiet gonna, moment. I was going to say, I feel like it's very calming. Mm. And I see that. Mm. Yeah, it gives them like yeah. calm. Yeah, right. she was called Marie Claire the boat. She even had her oh, name. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've got, we got the third one there on the silo as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, do you do a lot? Of, is there a lot of your work like based on like sea sea animals or sea sea because you live it's because you live by the in I Devon think, or yes it, yeah. it it is it is it's just um, when when you live in a place like this you just sort of uh, you know fall out of bed and there's inspiration down the, you know there's there is so much inspiration just walking around the um, around the coast um, so yeah that's what that's what I'm seeing uh, day to day but this one was a nice little canvas because it, it sort of combines two I do a lot of um, observational work and botanical work just drawing to um, understand things really and, yeah um, and, and to keep being able to draw you know and then you can use that for everything else um, but the um, the sort of splashy abstract things like part of another series on uh, of wave paintings where I've been trying to um, get the action of water the feel of water by putting canvases in the, and letting the waves come over them. Yeah, so you paint yeah. like layers of acrylic, let yeah, the sea yeah. wash it, mm. let that dry, do another layer, and you get this, this building up of lovely water patterns, which only the water can do. Like you couldn't, if you painted it with a, a brush, you would get something very, um, very flat and very dead. But the water does it makes its own shape. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's like a little combination yeah, that's amazing. Too, which is sort of nice to play about with things like that. Yeah, so, it's yeah. interesting. Um, what is the best thing about being an artist? Um, well, I think I definitely um, discovered that or, or rediscovered it this year um, with everything being uh, locked down and, and everything cancelled. And actually, if, if you're um, like being an artist, you've always got, um, you've got so much to fall back on. You've got, like always got... Um, uh, you know, work to um, mm. sort of keep you keep you occupied, keep your head occupied, and um, keep you happy. <laughs> um, it, it's something you've still got a relationship with the world, wherever you are, however small it is, whatever you can and can't do, you can express yourself, and you can kind of as I say it's it's kind of to expressing yourself to other people as well. So it's been it's been invaluable. It's, yeah. it's made me really appreciate it. This. This summer, well, I, mean, I think it did anyway. But, yeah, absolutely. But it just brings it home to you that that it's a, it's a really precious thing to have, and and not limited to um, one little group of people. I think it's in everybody. You know, I, um, a lot of people watched uh, Grace and Perry's Art Club, didn't they, and discovered like, oh yeah, it doesn't have to be a massive kind of uh, you know uh, pressured uh, you know, yeah. producing a, a brilliant piece of art. It's meant to be like fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. do you think anyone could be an artist? I definitely do. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think you just got to find what you in, enjoy. Like, I feel doing. I'm terrible at oh, all your painting. Oh, well, <laughs> this, this is a project. Yeah, something yeah. I should work on probably. <laughs> but it might find something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So now this is going to be uh, two silly questions. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favourite Disney character, and which one, and why? <laughs> so my favourite. And my favourite Disney film is um, Beauty and the Beast because it's kind it's of like habit. it's just my favourite story in the, anyway. So That's for, for Disney to do it, and the Beast is brilliant, isn't he? Yeah. Brilliant. So I think it'll probably be that at the end, and it's always a slight disappointment when he turns into the I know, soft yeah. prince at the end, yeah. and then she asks him to growl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that would be yeah. my um, yeah. Great. Like and um, if you had a superpower, what would it <laughs> <Yeah>. be? <laughs> um, 
yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> hard. I think whatever you chose, you would find it was like you didn't really want it no. after a bit. And the the thing the thing that jumps to my mind is that um, so the superpower would be um, hearing what people think. And I don't know if you've ever seen that. Um, yeah. There's a really kind of like. Um, I don't know if it's a good film, but it's a funny film with Mel Gibson, uh, What Women Want. And he can suddenly, something happens and he can suddenly hear what, <laughs> what women are thinking. Yeah. And, uh, ooh, it, it, you know, it causes him a lot of problems, but it's hilarious. And it would be hilarious. Want, yeah. But you do know some you things you don't want to know. Exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. Today I'm going up the stairs to a fantastic art exhibition, Vincent's, and we got to go up quick because it's going to finish up pretty soon and he's going to be taking it down so I want to get all this on film. Oh, we're going to the large gallery, all of this work, look at that. Isn't that amazing? I love it. So this is exuberance, fantastic, look at the detail on that, that's fantastic isn't it, look at that. He's been exhibiting in places like London and all over the country. He definitely is a talented abstract artist. Now, going around the room, I love this. <laughs> 